Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the April 19th, 2023 Sutton Conservation, Sutton Conservation Commission meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, tonight in person, we have Jamie Marin, Tim Thompson, and Jared Duvall, and myself, William Wentz, as chair. Um, Unavailable, Nicole Oben, Robin Jakes, and Mike McGovern. In-person staff of Wanda Bean, the secretary, Brandon Fanth, the town consultant, and Calvin Chase, the, the assistant. Pursuit to Gov Governor Haley's March 29, 2023 order extending the temporary provisions of pertaining to the open meeting law until March 31st, 2025. This meeting of the Sutton Conservation Commission is in a hybrid format and is being recorded. The recording will be available on the town's website YouTube channel. To join the meeting, visit www.zoom.us slash join and enter meeting ID 884-3427-6723 and the passcode is 596504. The meeting will be broadcast and recorded on local public access station Verizon 31 and Child Inspection 191 and live streamed on the town's YouTube channel when available. A recording of the meeting will be made available after proceedings on the town's website and YouTube channel. The first thing up is 6.30 is to sign the order of conditions for 14 Lincoln Road and 30, 334 Manchuk Road Bridge Rehab. Oh, come on. on 14 Lincoln Road, uh, the only one that can sign is yourself and Jamie. Okay. Uh, and Tim. That's, and that's really all you need. Okay, three is enough? Three, yeah. Okay. That was from the last meeting. Wait a minute, wrong one. Hold on. Oh, it's just 14. That's 14? Yeah. Okay. Let me just make sure I give you the right one. Yep, I put it on here. Okay. So this one here. The um, Manchurk Road? I believe. I'll have to have, I may have to have no, the other sign that one too. That was trees. So was you 14. can sign it. 14 is the. Robin oh. can sign it. I can catch up with her. <coughs> And Jamie can sign it, I believe. And this and next one is 334 Manchuk Road, the bridge rehab. We missed signing this at the last meeting. Yeah, so unfortunately, I was. Jamie and, Jamie and Tim can sign it. Jared yes. cannot. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's three for now. And what I'll do is I'll send it out to Ron and I. You know, I could, even if I catch him at the next meeting, that's fine too. Okay. Next up. 635, it's a new one. In accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 131, <coughs> Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, and the Sutton Bylaw 12, Wetlands Protection, the Conservation Commission will hold a hearing to view, review a request for determination RDA submitted by Hayward and Christine Rogers of Sutton Mass. The hearing will be held on Wednesday, April 19, 23, at 6.35 p.m. The project consists of removal of six trees that are compromising the wall at 35 West Sutton Road. Welcome. Is anyone here for that? If you are, please come up to the chair and state your name and address into the microphones so our friends at home can hear us. Christine Rogers. Haywood Rogers. Welcome. And Brynn, do you have an update? Or Calvin? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Calvin visited the site today. Let's get it all date stamped. Um, he has some pictures that he'd like to go through. Just to give you the commission a quick little tour. All right, so you, here you can see the front of the house from the road. Um, two of the trees in question are the two tall trees on the right side there. Um, how do I just keep on going over the right and eventually we'll show So this is one of the trees that's um, in a retaining wall and it's starting to, the roots of it are starting to breach the retaining wall. And this is the retaining wall that is starting to crumble. This is the next tree that was right behind it. You can see the retaining wall under this one is even worse. Very limited root space for this, uh, this size tree. Um, this is an ash tree that is on the side of the house. It is also on the list for removal. Here behind the house, there are two maple trees. They're fairly large, um, but they have some storm damage in them and they are also scheduled for removal. 
another view of the two maple trees that you can see right behind the house. You can see the top of one has already been snapped off at some point. And this is a box elder that is right by the water. You can see it as um, poor root structure. It's not doing too well. Um, and this is another view of the maple trees along the side of the house and this large evergreen in the background is um, probably just going to be trimmed up during their the tree removal visit. This is another view of, from the side of the house. You can see that one evergreen tree that will be trimmed and in the background you can see the top of one of the maples that has been damaged. And one last view of the ash tree on the side of the house. Um, there's two liters on that. It's not in great condition. Yep. And uh, on just a moment. And what I'm going to do now is bring up the arborist letter. So, oh, I got to do stop the share. And then I got to reshare. There's a arborist letter from R.W. Emmett stating the veracity of the uh, shape of the trees and that um, the dangerous need to come down. Um, so there you have it. The only question I think is uh, whether or not the commission uh, would prefer mitigation in the form of replacement trees or shrubs has been the, the modus operandi in the past. Thank you very much, Calvin and Brandon. Uh, turn it over to the board. They look like big trees near a house <clears throat> that are damaged. So, I mean, they, um, does the applicant through the chair have any plans to do any replantings at this point? Or? Well, we're going to be doing some renovating of the house and trying to put a new roof on that's being compromised by the trees. And this guy planted one of them. <laughs> it's just, I realized. <laughs> At the time, I didn't realize at the time it was going to take off and become such a huge tree, Westland Nurseries. Um, uh, so, and then afterwards, yeah, once a, a new retaining section wall is put in there, then we'll put the appropriate shrubbery to make it look aesthetically up to date so my wife will be happy with it. <laughs> I get in Brandon good. I had no idea my dog was barking when you were out there today. Oh. So, you know, the pictures you took, I couldn't have done a better job myself. So thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. It's interesting to see this process, by the way. I'm kind of intrigued by it. <laughs> Might have a couple openings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Calvin worked at uh, Western Nurseries. Oh. It's a great well, I, I beg your pardon? I worked at Western Nurseries. Oh, yeah, great. The, the <laughs> best, the best. But I thought it was only going to get to be like 10 feet high. It's been like a, a beanstalk. I couldn't believe it. So it's about time I try to do something about it. So, um, Typically, normally, when we approve the trees, we have the pictures in the letter. So we have all that. And it's usually replacement of some shrubs or, or trees um, so to the board. Any feelings on that? It doesn't look like there's a lot of room. I would say shrubs probably more appropriate. Mm. Thank um, you. Yes. Do we usually do two to one? Three, three usually two to one, and it has to be a native yeah, shrub. And, and, mm -hmm. and when they're monster trees, it can go as many as four, but the normal is two to one. I'd be in support of that. So if we could go to like two to one trees in the vicinity of where the other ones are, you, do you have time to do your retaining wall and everything? That work? That would work, yeah. And, and now, if we. If we decided uh, on the real large trees to do more trimming up, would that be acceptable? You know, try to leave the trees, but do a lot, a lot of pruning. Would that be acceptable too? So they don't compromise us in our safety in and case. also yeah. Yeah. on the roof. Yeah. So. yeah. Absolutely. If you prefer to keep them, just clean them up. Yeah. Okay. You've got a very good arborist, so they do nice work. No, nobody wants to see the tree fall in the house yeah. or anything like that. Right. So what, whatever makes you feel yeah. safe. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, We're trying to be proactive. Right. And the, the other caveat on the replacement is that they have to be native. So, you know, like no hydrangeas, things like that. To have it be a native shrub that okay. you would find, well, 
is close to the, the you, you can't find really, you go to like Weston, they all have uh, what they call cultivars. So they're like bigger, better, bigger sh flowers, showier flowers than you would find in the wild. But as long as you can find it with the same name is, is the kind you'd find out in the, in the woods, that, that works. Brenda, did you sell me that tree that took off? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Good salesman. Um, to the, anyone from the public? Okay, so I will need a motion to close the public I'll hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for 35 West Sutton Road. I'll second. Tim made a motion to close the public hearing. Jamie seconded. Tim, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. Jared, how do you vote? Aye. Nine bill vote aye. And I'll make a motion to issue a negative determination for 35 West Sutton Road with the condition yes. that they replace the trees that are removed um, with either two native shrubs or trees. I'll second. Uh, Tim made a motion for a negative determination. Jamie seconded. Tim, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. Jared, how do you vote? Aye. And I don't vote aye. Thank you both. Have a great night. Thank Good luck much. with the project. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the minutes of April 5th, if we could table those, would one is still finishing those? A motion? I'll make a motion to table the minutes for April 5th, 2023. Second. Tim made a motion to uh, table the minutes of April 5th, 23. Jamie seconded. Tim, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. Jared, how do you vote? Aye. Aye, Bill, vote aye. So uh, get, the, get the next one up. Next up is a discussion for 11 Wheelock Road. Hello, folks. Welcome back. Just your name and address for the record, please. My name is Ned Bacon. I live at 64 Singletary Avenue. <clears throat> I'm here this evening to bring to the board's attention the discharge of extreme levels of microbial pollutants in the form of E. coli and fecal coliform from Tenwheelock Road into wetlands on 11 Wheelock Road. And I'd like to review the list of materials in the package that I gave everybody. Does everybody have that? Mr. Bacon, I just want to stop you there. We had this as discussion for 11 Wheelock Road. Um, 10 Wheelock Road is not here. I, I believe that's Dr. Gobay's property. I and think I put the wrong number on there because it was a little confusing. Well, I think the board, just to not drag this out, the board had already voted and said there was no more discussion to be had on 10 Wheelock Road. So I just want to make sure it's not the property we're talking about. It, it is the property we're talking okay. about. And you didn't consider the discharge of pollutants into my wetlands. So you didn't consider this problem. This is a different problem. Okay, give you a couple of minutes here. I just I think out of respect to you, your neighbor who wasn't not notified about this. That's not my fault. Um, we've also told you that this property, I believe the majority of the board has been out there. Um, the, the conservation consultant has been out there. Wanda, as the secretary, has been out there, and none of us saw any violations, so I don't know why we're rehashing this again. The reason we're rehashing this is that there's a violation in terms of discharging of pollutants in the 11 Wheelock Road. I have data that backs that up, and if you haven't considered that problem, this is a new problem. Okay, where's the data from? It's from Neshoba Analytics. Okay, it's and a did, water they, sample. did they take the water sample? I will address that. Okay. Okay. Did they take the water sample? I, I will address that. Could you tell us who took the water sample? I will address that. Okay. I'm trying to be patient with you, Mr. Bacon. We've already told you we're not going to discuss that. Okay. I'll, I'll, go, I th I think I'll, I'll go over my qualifications with you. I have two engineering degrees. Okay. A Bachelor of Science from Cornell University. Okay. I have a Master of Science degree from WPI. I made my living as an engineer for 31 years. I spent many hours in laboratories in the course of my training and education. <clears throat> I am a believer and a practitioner of the scientific method, and I know darn well that I have the ability to take a sample of water without corrupting it. 
I've brought so one of the I, I, I brought just, one of the vessels from Neshoba Analytics. I'd like to pass it around so you can see what was I, done. I think the the problem here is in in if anyone disagrees, I, I just we're rehashing the same thing, and, and no one is disputing. We are not rehashing the same me. thing. Excuse no one, me. It, no one's disputing qualifications or educations or anything like well, that. Well, actually, they did. Nicole Oben disputed okay, so Nicole, my qualifications. Nicole is not here. I think the problem is at the February fifteenth meeting. Okay, Nicole's not here tonight, so I don't think that's fair to discuss her. But I have I have her 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 testimony so right here. I'd like to repeat to you. I don't think that's necessary. What my my point was going to be is that this is a issue with your neighbor. Is that? Oh, no, it's not. Okay. So this this is a conservation commission issue because there is a discharge of pollution. I don't care what the point source of pollution is. The sample was taken at the boundary of his property. Okay. There is runoff from that property. I've been to a lot of meetings where people complain about runoff from a development onto their property. I am doing that and. And worse than just runoff with sediment, this is runoff with dangerous levels of microbial pollutants. And they come right into my wetland. I've given you the material. The wetland was delineated by Margaret Bacon before we built our barn so that it wasn't going to be in the AWRA. I've given you that map. You can see that that stream flows right into that wetland. And you have not considered that in your previous meetings. Oh, I, so if, this is a violation. If you would let me talk and stop cutting me off, as you tend to do every time you're here, and we repeat this over and over, I was going to say, in my opinion, I'm speaking for myself, that it is a conflict of interest is you as the abutter to take the water sample and not have someone outside of you or someone who lives there take the water sample my other question will be have you tested the water above the property I can't do that because the stream originates on the property and to do that I'd have to trespass so to get a sample above what is potentially a point source of pollution I would have to trespass on the property okay. if you look at the aerial photos you'll see that that stream originates on that property Brandon what's your suggestion on that we can't go into Mr. Uh, Dr. Goldblatt's property. No, no, you can't do that. And uh, I think where you're trying to get to, the, the point you're trying to get at is, is uh, uh, the background levels, the natural background it, levels. It's a, exactly, that's what I'm trying to. Right, so so <coughs> the, the insinuation I'm getting here is that the water, that the E. coli fecal coliform levels are very high on your property due to uh, concentration of animals across the street. Forget the insinuation. The water sample is taken at the northern boundary of that property, directly where the stream comes off the property of 10 Wheelock. And, it was the, and there was a second sample taken at 11 Wheelock, which showed identical levels of, of uh, microbial <coughs> pollutants, okay? It wasn't just taken on my property. It was taken immediately where that water comes off his property as well. There were two samples taken. So if, if the, the animals aren't necessarily the issue, there's really no one to go after. Is, that's just natural background. Um, that's what the point I'm trying to get at. I'm not disputing that the water doesn't have the issues and I, I sympathize, but I don't, we keep beating a dead horse and how do we prove or disprove it, it's not the commission's job to. Yeah, and that's that's why I. I Who's whose job is it? That would the, the burden would be on on you as the complainant. I have done that. I have given you data to work with. I don't think that that's adequate data. Why not? You need background level. Like you you you're, you're showing a fecal coliform or E. coli level that's very high. I get it. it doesn't surprise me at all. It's more common than you think, Mr. Bacon. Um, but the question is. Is it coming from uh, the concentration of animals across the street? And you have two samples, right? One from your side of the road and one from the other side of the road. Um, but can you prove that their uh, E. coli are from animals? Have you done a DNA test on it? Uh, of course not. And I'd have to get DNA from those animals as well. No, you, want. you can get the DNA from the, the, the water sample and the fecal coliform if you bring it to the right lab. And you I, can prove I, that, they, yes, to, this, is, this is pig fecal coliform. Otherwise, it's just background. 
So why don't we do that? If you want to get the test and shows that it's pig or whatever animal, I, I still think it I, should be done I, by an independent party. I, yeah, I, 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 I agree completely. Why do you say that, Jamie? I, I say that because you're in a dispute with a neighbor and the objectivity is, is we want to make sure that we're reviewing objective data. I'm not accusing oh, you come of on. not collecting Co Jamie, objective data. Jamie, don't, don't go there. It, I'm done with this chair. conversation. Yeah, I, I would I, agree. I, I, did you get the did you We've get seen the package? We've gotten everything, everything and reviewed everything okay. that you've So are you, are you guys familiar with the volunteer water quality monitoring that, I, that Mass DEP sponsors? I have a neighbor that's on that. Okay, I, I don't good. want to talk about this anymore. I'm done with Well, I know you don't, but I do. Well, I think that's a little disrespectful. What we've told you multiple times, this is not a conservation issue. At this this time. absolutely this is, is a conservation issue when I have surface water running from someone else's property onto my property that's polluted. That is a conservation issue. It's in the bylaw. But we can't prove that the pollution is coming. Oh, come from, on. From, you guys have said that you've driven by the property and you don't smell things. I mean, this is not scientifically based, I, I think what, what you're saying. I think what this is is more of a civil issue that you have You've said that before. It is not a civil issue. Okay. This is a town issue. It's the conservation so commission. So I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you've been to other boards in this town, right? I've been to the Board of Health, and they wash their hands of it. Okay. Because it's not. Do, a do you out. understand that there's a, the rule of thumb please, is that please, pigs, please don't. Do you understand? Don't talk down to this board. Can you just talk like a, a gentleman and not talk down to the board? We've I been would, more than patient. We've I come would, out to everyone. Uh, actually, I am going to tell you, I'm not having any more discussion on this. I would like to talk like a gentleman if I wasn't always cut off and said this conversation okay, was gonna, over, which we're gonna was give last you, time. We're going to give you five minutes. Come up with a different point than you had. Because this isn't, this isn't a courtroom. I mean, this is not a conservation issue. Why is it not a conservation issue? Brandon, could you please tell Mr. Bacon why it's not a conservation I'll, issue? I'll say it this way, actually. Even if this is a conservation issue, the commission has decided not to prosecute. All right? So, and that's all there is to it, which means that the, the uh, burden is on Mr. Bacon to take this forward. Uh, as a civil matter, they could sue the town, he could sue whoever, try to uh, compel action. And that's all there is to it. Why has the board uh, decided not to take action on this? I thought that was made clear in, in the past. Well, there was a lot of misinformation in the past. One, about the berm. Two, about how long those sheds have been there. Three, about how long those pigs have been there. there it was just wrong. I was told that those pigs had been there for over 20 years, and I gave you pictures that showed when those pig pens appeared, which was within, within the last seven years. So there's a ton of misinformation out there. I hear people say we drive by and we don't smell anything. That's not, uh, that's not due diligence, guys. This, but smell has nothing to do with conservation. Okay, okay, uh, all I'm saying, uh, you guys went and you did a site visit for an hour, yeah. and you started to tell me how the property works. I've lived there for almost 40 years. You said you didn't see any, mo you know, it was a little muddy, there was, there was no water running. This was sloppy. It was not, and, and I have given you hard data that indicates there's a problem, and you're ignoring it for some reason. We haven't ignored anything. Well, you're, you're making the assumption that it's, that it's a uh, endemic background level of pollution, and you have no basis for saying that. You've any more on, than I have any basis, as you say, that You've the animals on. are the source. Let's move on. All right. Next up, 41 Old Mill Road. Um, Rauf has asked this to continue to May 17th. He's waiting for a survey. What's that say? Survey equipment? You guys aren't doing your job. You're not doing your job. Mr. Bacon, we're a volunteer board. You're delinquent. That's part of the problem, that you're volunteers. You don't have experts here, okay? You should open your minds and listen and really let the public come and speak. We've you don't do you, that. One second. You've been on at least five agendas. We Brandon's been out there at least once. With you and Bill. Yeah. We made. We went out and visited the site. Okay. We've done. We've reviewed at least ten emails with multiple attachments. To say that we haven't been 
sensitive to your didn't say you haven't been sensitive is completely inaccurate you've been inaccurate if you've reviewed the emails you have not gotten the information that was sent it's been misrepresented and it's been wrong the emails I've gone you through sent all the you're the source you're the source of the emails that we've received the, t the, the discussion in these meetings has been wrong. I've gone through all the transcripts. I can give you my annotations if you'd like. There's been a lot of misunderstanding here. And, and unfortunately, uh, as much as you say I've been given an opportunity, I have not been given an opportunity to get that straight. It, it has not been accurate. I I'm think, sorry. Mr. Bacon, what it sounds like you want us to do is go tell your neighbor to get rid of all his animals, get rid of everything, and do this and do no, that. No, that's not what I'm asking. So I don't know what you want us to that, do. That's, that's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking you to do is to take this seriously, okay, okay come on. and I try to get to the seriously. root of the problem, all right? Okay. It's clear that if the pigs were removed, it would solve 90% of the problem, but I'm not here to, to suggest that solution to you. What I'm here to do is tell you there's a problem. That's all. The analogy, Mr. Chairman, here is the lower court has ruled if the uh, complainant wants to take it further, they have to appeal it to the next level. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. We will be seeing you shortly, I hope. I, uh, this, this is extremely <coughs> unsatisfying, I think, for everybody involved. And it would help if you would, you know, let me speak about what I really, you know, what I want to talk to you about rather than shut me down. Forty one old mill. Forty one old mill. Uh Ralph has asked for this to continue to May seventeenth. I think this what does this say? Wanda his survey machine oh his surveying machine is being repaired. Being repaired. So just to take two weeks. Just to give an update on that, he said he might have it back for the next May meeting, but he wanted to make sure there's enough time for forty one old mill road. Um, so that was an update from Rauf, and I think that came over yesterday or today, Wanda? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday, okay. So, so he's asked to send it to what, the May 18 meeting? May 17th meeting. 17th meeting. But it's just a discussion, so I don't believe we need to continue anything. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. But, but because of the, all the issues that are going on there, does that one ask the chair, um, does anybody have any problems with that? Oh, yeah. Does anyone on the board have a problem with that? What? With the. Well, Rauf just yeah, giving no an update yeah. in a month. Um, I've been driving by. It looks like they're making good progress as best they can. And, and it should get better as we yeah. get into the summer. Uh, site visit reviews for certificate of compliance. So 7 Stockwell Farm Way and 137 Dodge Hill Road. I don't know if those can be signed. I'll recuse from signing on those. I think well, that 7 Stockwell Farm Way uh, is, is good for a uh, complete certificate. Right, but you're going to have to wait till the next <coughs> meeting if you're recusing because we only have two signers. So these will have One, to go two, to three. Why can't J Why can't Jared sign? In the absence. Bec uh, oh, that's right, because Jared wasn't around. Because he just came aboard. Okay. Right, that so is true. So he's unable. So if I think if we leave these till the next meeting, when the others come back. I mean, it, to keep it moving, I, I just don't know where I've been recused on everything where it was past family land. Right. If it, it probably mm -hmm. doesn't make sense for me to sign it. I just right. would feel that it's more of a conflict if I've recused on everything else. But I don't want to delay. I don't think there's no, a time crunch No one on has side. been on, on me. Okay. Like, so usually what happens is I get the phone call, oh, we need to close next <coughs> Thursday or there's going to be a calamity. I haven't gotten any of that. So okay. No, I usually get it. them first. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I think five five was signed off because that's under. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So yeah. That's what okay, so just table that or whatever right. you want to call it. <laughs> um, 81 Purgatory Road, LLC, we have a open space residential subdivision 30 lot this is the one that um well it came in front of our board it's the same property right brandon yep. yes same property same property um mike brandon and myself and robin were out there last saturday and mike and mike yep jamie's been out there tim yeah, i think okay. went out. i don't know if jared went out but um we went out there so obviously they've already filed with us right so usually Usually the, the question is, do they need to file with conservation? They already have. Yeah. So I don't I'm know. I'm just going to say applicant has already filed with conservation. Yeah. I don't know if they're looking for anything more, but I don't no, think it I would think be appropriate to go into it anymore because then that would probably dis count as discussion and, and this yeah. is being continued. We've even, uh, the public hearing is open, right? 
Yes, yeah. yes, because it's continued to next week, mm -hmm. or two weeks. It's on your continuation is the next meeting. It will be at 6.30. I haven't had the pleasure to listen to the last okay. one yet. So I just said they've already filed with conservation. Okay. CONCOM public hearing is open. It's continued to 5.3. Would that be 5.3? 5.3, um, yes. Um, I think that's that. It would almost be helpful if we had a departmental input form from them on this one. You do. You know what I'm saying? Right there. They sent us one to say that there's an open space they development. They sent it to me by and email. And then we have to get solved. But you know how we identify our issues on those forms to the extent that we see one? Yep. It would be nice if we knew kind of what they were thinking about it, too. I that might be helpful. I sent you email. Today? <clears throat> no, and I got it. I got it before... Uh, before I left for vacation. I'm almost sure that's when I got it. This is asking for the open space development. And it, it, my understanding, oh, I, if Their I'm reading this right. Is, I believe next, on the 29th. Okay. 28th, 29th, wait a Makes sense. Let me just make that. sure I'm not missing anything. No, their meeting there. is on the 24th. So her meeting's next Monday, and it's going to include that. Yeah, it's nothing different. I agree, Brent, uh, Jamie, though. That makes sense. I sent her agenda today. Tammy gave me yeah. the agenda, so I sent her. You can look on that. So their next see. meeting is before our next meeting, right? So yes, we can. Right. So if we watch the meeting, we can get an idea of whether or mm -hmm. not. I, the, only, the only reason that I say that is, you know, we're focused on a certain plan, and to the extent it's, it's impacted by or planning change. board or changed or, you know, it would or there's information that comes up that might be relevant to us. It might make sense. And then, yeah, so it would make sense for us to watch that yeah. or be up to date on it. Yeah. Um, next thing is 450 Central Turnpike. This is a retreat lot, and this is coming from the applicant is Romeo Felters Mill LLC. Yeah, up on the screen behind you, Mr. Nope. Chairman. So it's this property right here. So there's definitely wetlands back in here. You see that blue line? There's a stream. Um, up in this area over here looks okay, but it's, it's, on, a, it's on a hill it's going down this way. But it is upland, so I'd say the wetland most likely doesn't start until you get into the woods here. So <laughs> there was a driveway that comes up here, and they built a house in this area. Um, and most likely be outside of jurisdiction so so we, i just want to i saw something in an email that was a map that included the wetland location yeah, that was yeah and it's it was over in over in this general me. area you have that it was uh do i have that yeah i do it might be that that's exactly what it is <clears throat> what i do is i make copies of everything they send me and i put it on the clipboard so, I mean, it would be an issue to the extent that they want to do a wetland crossing and build in the back, right? But if they build in the front, they'd probably be out of jurisdiction. It depends on where they want to locate the house. Right. So, what do we want to say we need to file with CONCOM if... If work is done within 100 feet of wetland boundary. Okay. Otherwise, no application. This one goes with Cougar Fire West Sutton Road. And these are two new ones. Just where is that? What's next to that? What's a landmark there? That it's across the street from Pigeon Hill Pond. Oh, okay. And, uh, oh, I forget his name. He had the illegal uh, landfill in his backyard when I first started. Who was it? David Dudley. Dudley, was it? No, maybe not. Uh, any yeah, other across the street from the, the guy who, who had the illegal landfill? There was a he, there's this gentleman here. He's, he passed away, um, but back when I started 15 years ago, one of the issues was that this guy was trying to make a, a buck or two, and he was accepting uh, uh, contractors like roll-offs. And just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and th this is a steep hill that goes down to Pigeon Hill Pond. Yeah. 
and they were just pretty much backing up. Like they come in all through here and just backing up and then dumping it right over the side. Clean fill wanted, right? Yeah. 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 And he got caught <laughs> and it didn't end well for him. He actually got caught by the building inspector and our administrator who were coming back from Oxford. And they caught the trucks going in there. Well, so it was, it was one of my introductions. I'm like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Welcome to Sutton. Probably uh, cost him more to get rid of the stuff than he accepted it for. Sure. <laughs> it was 449 four, four Central Turnpike, and a lovely elder couple bought it. They made it their retirement home, and they cleaned up everything. So they bought it with all the stuff they on it. They bought it with everything, yeah, and they cleaned wow. it up. Wow. Well, happy ending. Um, any other enforcement issues or unexpected business from anybody? Uh, nothing on my Am I hitting check. everything? That seems mm -hmm. quick. We'll make it up for last week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, motion to adjourn. Second. Tim made a motion to adjourn. Jamie, Jamie seconded. Tim, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. Jared, how do you vote? Aye. And I, Bill, vote aye. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Record.